Well, the time has finally come for me to do the installation portion of this uh, of this series that I've done on the JAE chassis. I actually had this video shot months and months ago. Unfortunately, I didn't finish every little part that I needed to finish. Um, and I eventually moved, so welcome to the new studio. Welcome to the new garage. Uh, I think you're going to like it a lot better. I'll be able to get some nice full frame shots uh, from here on out. But uh, hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so now we're going to get into the installation of your action into the receiver. And what I look for when I first install an action into this chassis is I take out the recoil lugs. Okay, so all you have is the chassis itself and the action or receiver. So this is a Bueller receiver, and I'm just going to go ahead and test fit it in here. Okay, and it'll slide in real nice, snug. But what I'm looking for is that it goes in really without any binding and that the receiver will sit flush down onto the uh, the top of the of the chassis and so it does on both sides okay and again if I got a flashlight and I shine it through here through the back you'll see light uh, going through the heel okay in fact I can get a business card and I can slide it underneath this heel okay because it's it's free floated and that's that's good all right, so now that you know that your receiver will actually fit into the, so the stock, we'll go ahead and put these, uh, you want this, uh, this D portion facing forward, and you're going to slide it in. You can't really mess this up. They, they only go in one way, okay? So you go ahead and slide this in here, and you'll go ahead and just thread on this, uh, this really long screw that comes with it. Get your other one in one way. We'll go ahead and put this in. What I want you to also notice is it is possible, because there's a little slop in here, so it is possible that this can, as you're putting it in, this can shift out of its slot. So if it shifts out of its slot, it'll eventually bind up, right? Um, so you, it's going to be a little tricky when you put your receiver in. It's either going to slide in, it, it should just slide in really with little force. If it, if it binds up, stop, and just kind of fiddle with it a little bit, until it all fits perfectly in and it slides in and you'll see it. Okay, so what you do is you basically you, you tilt the receiver on its side or you can stand it up. Okay, and what you want are these you want these slides to, to stick up. And so when you drop in your receiver you want it to hook the receiver legs with uh, on the on these D cuts on the on the uh, the receiver lugs. Alright so what you're gonna do like I said you've got your uh, your your receiver locking lugs nice and loose. Okay, I'm going to grab your action. You're going to make sure you're hooked onto the front band. So again, I've got my front band hooked over here. Let's push these receiver legs all the way out. And you might have to ease up a little bit. Set the receiver down. Again, make sure your front band's hooked in. Set your receiver back a little bit. So we're hooked in there. And what you're going to see is this locking lug you can see this locking lug really isn't lined up with the D cut on the receiver. What you got to do is just kind of reach into the magwell, push it up, okay? Make sure that okay. So now I have both locking lugs engaged into the D cuts on the receiver legs. From here, you just want to gently push, okay? And it is, you know, stick your fingers in there a little bit, okay? Kind of wiggle the wiggle the locking lugs to make sure they're not binding anywhere, and then you should be able to just push your receiver all the way down okay now uh, and again just make sure that your front band is engaged on the adjustable stock ferrule okay so now we're here and from this point you tighten these until just until they stop okay That one goes a little farther. This one here didn't go to go as far. I don't know why. We'll go ahead and snug it down a little bit. Okay, there. Looks like it just it went just fine. Now you don't want to tighten these too much. There is a torque spec, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. So this one I'm clamping down, and back it off. Okay, clamping this one down, back it off. Okay. Now you can see my receiver is fully seated into the chassis 
Okay. All right, so now that the receiver is essentially seated into the action most of the way, you want to use a torque wrench, okay? And you want to torque these two screws to no more than 15 inch pounds. That's not a lot of pressure, and that is the recommended factory torque. I've used this torque, and I've had fantastic results out of it. You can see it just doesn't take a lot. Now with that step done, all that's left to do is put your trigger group in. Now this particular trigger group seems to have pretty good lockup. Okay. And that's essentially it for this one. So now, again, if this was really, really loose, then you can go ahead and adjust those screws there, and you can take out the slot. Once that's done, you always want to do a, a function check, okay? Make sure the rifle's unloaded, make sure there's no ammunition around at all, okay? Safety's on, safety off. Okay. Now the only thing left to do is install the handguard that comes along with it. All right. So now, basic installation is done. All right, so moving on. Um, now that we've got the action completely installed into the chassis, now it's time to tweak the front end. Okay, now the instruction manual says to basically make sure that that uh, there's actually start off at a neutral position where there's the the barrel isn't really being contacted by the by the uh, the front end adjustment okay so at this point what you want to make sure now what I had to do with my particular handguard is I sanded this handguard down because uh, as you as you pull on this barrel it's going to tilt it down and the uh, the bottom cuts on the bottom of the handguard are going to start touching the stock and you don't really want that Okay, so whenever you do have your rifle in the right spot, as far as the front end being adjusted, uh, just get a business card or something and make sure that you can actually pass it around uh, between the top of the handguard and the forearm of the stock. Okay, and so I'm able to do that on mine on both sides. Okay, so I'm hitting the operating rod guy. Again, very important, make sure there is no contact between the handguard and the, the stock once your front end barrel tensioner is adjusted. All right, now, so now we're gonna start looking at the front end uh, barrel tensioner or the uh, the draw pressure, the adjustable draw pressure uh, that, we, that you have available in the JAE chassis. So this is pretty much the secret weapon. This is what makes, I think, in my opinion, this is one of the things that makes this particular chassis very, very, uh, accurate for, for M14 and M1A rifles, okay? So what you've got here, you're going to need two Allen wrenches, a 332nds and a 316ths, okay? So right here you've got a set screw, okay, the locking screw for the tensioner screw, okay? So this one here is a 332nds Allen wrench, okay? And then the other one, again, is a 316ths, okay? Now these wrenches should be included in the... Uh, in your JEE chassis kit. Now I already have mine preset and I'm a little uh, hesitant to adjust it simply because I have this thing shooting so well right now. Um, one of the things you can do is you can get a sharpie and you can make a witness mark, okay? And what you're gonna have to do is mess around with the barrel tensioner. What I think I'm gonna try to do here is get some tape. And get a razor blade. Okay, so now you have a visual reference on how much this thing is actually going to move. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is loosen the set screw for the barrel tensioner screw. So what you're going to see is as I turn this clockwise, I'm removing the draw pressure that I initially had set. And right there, it's basically maximized. Can't go any farther than that. Oh, if you notice, 
the uh, the blue tape, <clears throat> you can see that this spot is higher than the so the ferrule is higher than the or the uh, the front band is higher than the stock ferrule. Okay, and that's that's basically how much I had how much drop pressure I had put on this particular rifle. So you'll notice as I loosen this screw, it's going to pull it back down. And that's farther than what I normally had it, but I'll go ahead and keep going. And it's pretty obvious now, as you see, that uh, that my my front band has been pulled way down. But you'll also notice now my handguard is starting to touch. So if you're going to adjust the draw pressure on the front end, make sure your handguard is clear. So you don't really don't want this much draw pressure, probably. But it's something you're going to have to tune and experiment according to your rifle and to your load. So I'll put this back to my nominal position that I've already played around with. Actually, I don't even know if it's my nominal position because I picked it, it worked, and I just don't want to mess with it. So now if you if you go back, if you want to so you want to go back, there's going to be some lash or some take up before it starts to move again. So as you can see right there, I'm back to my original starting point. And so that I'm going to lock my set screw back down. That about does it for installation and setup of your JAE chassis into your action. I just want to go over a couple of other uh, small things <clears throat> that need to be noted before before I wrap up this video. Uh, this particular rifle, this is uh, this has been a labor of love. This is uh, the first rifle I ever built by myself with my own two hands, and it just happens to be the most accurate rifle I own. Um, trying it a couple of different stocks. It's always shot very well, but it seems to shoot the best in this particular chassis. Now, as far as the, the front band goes, uh, it's shooting well and the front band isn't even unitized. The gas is not unitized to the front band at all, and it still shoots very, very well. I don't know if that's, a, if, if that's helping or, or, or hurting uh, the system at all. Now, in an ideal world, you want a unitized gas cylinder so this front band isn't moving around. However, if the gas cylinder is unitized out of alignment, if it's if it's cattywampus or cockeyed or something like a crooked, what's still going to happen is you're going you're going to have a condition where it's it's not really in its equilibrium point or it's not centered on the stock ferrule of the JAE chassis, and there's really nothing you can do about it if it's unitized. Or like say if your barrel's over timed, say your gas cylinder is unitized perfectly, but your barrel's over timed, now your gas cylinder is is cockeyed a little bit, and you're going to have the same condition. So, in a perfect world, make sure your 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 uh, barrel is timed perfectly and your front band is in alignment. So, what you're just going to do? I mean, literally, you're just going to look at the front and make sure that it's not out of alignment to the left or the right. So that's pretty much about the only condition that you really have to worry about as far as being an issue with fitment of this chassis, unless the receiver doesn't fit in the chassis itself. Now, there's, there are some rare times where a specific receiver may have receiver legs that are maybe one's fatter than the other one, or the way it sits in the chassis, it's, it's canting the action to the left or to the right, so you're going to have some, some um, uneven forces applied at the, front of the, uh, at the front of the chassis. And I suppose at that point, you know, you can remove your front band, <clears throat> you can remove your gas cylinder altogether, install the chassis and see if the barrel's lined up with the channel itself. If it's not lined up, then you've got some kind of a, an unevenness in your receiver legs that's making the receiver twist. So if that is a condition, chances are your rifle's not going to shoot as well as it should. So that's something to be mindful of. So far, I've installed, I've only done two of these so far, this being my first, and the other one was just recently the one that I used for this video as well, and that was a Bueller receiver, and both of those seem to fit perfectly. I had no fit issues in the receiver or on the front end at all. Well, after two videos, you're probably wondering how this thing shoots. I keep on uh, commenting about how awesome it shoots and everything like that, and you're just like, well, show me some groups, you know? And so what I've got here is a, uh, is a 200 yard target, okay? And this was 52 shots of three different hand loads, and my average grouping was 0.915 MOA at 200 yards, fired in semi-auto from three different hand loads. 
and actually my hand loads brought the uh, brought the average group quite up quite a bit actually. So uh, as you can see, my hand loads uh, average 1.5 MOA. So it's the 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 biggest groups here. Uh, I think this one here, this one here was my my hand loads. Once I shot some good factory ammo like M118 long range and 175 grain gold medal match, uh, the M118 was 0.845 MOA average with the gold medal match averaging uh, 0.804 MOA. So what you'll see here is my best group out of this rifle ever was uh, was basically this one right here, 1.204 inches at 200 yards for five rounds for 0.574 MOA. I really can't, uh, you know, you, you can't deny that, that this thing shoots absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm sure it's basically, it's not all the chassis. Uh, it's uh, this particular rifle. Uh, you're wondering how in the world I would be able to get that kind of accuracy out of this rifle. Um, I guess I'll just quickly go over the specs of this particular rifle. Obviously we have the JAE chassis, but we've also got the loophole Mark IV extended range tactical four and a half to 14 power. It's got the uh, 22 inch John Wolf 5R uh, modified medium weight barrel. This, I call it a three quarter heavy barrel because it's heavier than a standard medium weight and it's not as heavy as a full Krieger barrel. Okay, and I've also got uh, shooting sights adjustable trigger. I actually have this trigger uh, tuned down to about three, just under four pounds. It's like three pounds, 10 ounces or something like that. Uh, maybe three three pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, so between all those components and using good ammo, I'm getting really, really good results. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I only have 52 instead of 55 is because I had the trigger tuned down so low that was a couple of those shots were doubles. So obviously the first shot hit on target, the second shot was completely off target. Okay. So uh, when it comes down to actual uh, accuracy that I was that I was documenting this thing shoots absolutely fantastic it never ceases to amaze me so uh, with that I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time